The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And
Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the fathers of light, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of this, his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creation, of his creature, excuse me. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your soul. But be doers of the word, and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and on going away immediately forget what they were like. But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God, the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress, and keep one, oneself unsustained in the world. May God add his blessing to the reading of these old scriptures. Amen. I invite the congregation to stand for a gospel reading as you are able. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem, Jerusalem gathered around Jesus, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them, regarding, regardless of what the CDC told them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews do not eat unless they uh, thoroughly wash their hands, thus observing the traditions of the elders and what your mom taught you to do. That's right. And they do not eat anything from the market unless it is washed. And there are many, also many other traditions that they observe, the washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes ask Jesus, why do your disciples not live according to the traditions of the elders, but eat with the five hands? Jesus said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far away from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Then Jesus called the crowd again and said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand there is nothing outside a person that is going to defile. But the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a the person. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. The scripture that we read on this Sunday morning is not just designated for ELCA Lutherans, with us specifically in mind, Catholics and Methodists, conservative Christians and liberal will all read these scriptures together and yet come to very different conclusions and hear very different messages. I personally thank God that we Christians don't all have to be the same, and I trust that the Holy Spirit is doing good work among us all, even with our differences. 
Today is one of those days when I'm going to preach almost exactly the opposite message set up for me, pitched to me underhand for me to knock out of the park. For instance, you can go ahead and wash your hands. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. Our reading for today come together to say that God has given us good laws to follow, and we best follow. God said it, that settles it, and we'd be better off in our life if we just did what the Bible said. However, and this is not so much the intentions for today, there are times when we are called to break rules for the sake of love. I like to be someone who says that Christians are not bound by laws and you can only be guided by God's love. I'm a little bit uh, of a rule breaker myself. I don't like to be confined. Some of you are like me. Let's admit it. However, I'm not that much an idealist. I know that we need laws to teach us, to guide us, and to curb our less ideal tendencies. Our Old Testament reading from Moses admonishes us to follow God's law. Moses says that God's laws are good for us. That the giving of these laws show that God cares about us, loves us, is near at hand, never abandons us. Is with us daily. And following God's laws brings us closer to God. In our Gospel reading, Jesus tells us that it is from within, from the human heart, that evil intentions come, and Lutherans teach that it takes an external work, something implanted in us from outside of us, like God's good law, to curb our evil intentions and set us along the path of righteousness, where we care for our neighbor. And our second lesson says every generous act of giving, every perfect gift, is from love. Some Christians say that God's Law does three good things for us in our lives. First, it curves the sinful intentions that we have to harm our neighbor and ourselves. Laws against stealing, against murder, against running red lights. The second use of the law is to act as a kind of mirror, showing us our spiritual brokenness and our need for salvation that we can't get ourselves up to heaven. Perfect is beyond us. And the last of the three traditional reasons for why Christians are to follow these good laws is because they shape us over time and with discipline into good people. People who live more and more and more out of love and less out of selfishness doing our own will. This is called sanctification, and it is an important aspect for Christians who try to live holy lives. People can love laws for all these good theological reasons and many more. When I was talking about our scripture reading today with a pastor, he recounted to me how his congregation can very positively respond when he gives them a legalistic, moralistic sermon, convicting them of how they should behave as Christians. We really needed to that, pastor. Thank you for letting us have it. We can love laws. Some people confess things to me with guilt and self-incrimination. And when I only offer divine grace, forgiveness from one Christian to another without any judgment, they seem unsatisfied that there was no moral convicting. We can love the law. The Pharisees in today's gospel reading love the law. For the Jewish people then, and now the law binds them together as a community, identifies them to the world as God's people. However, Jesus doesn't want us to love the law, but to love God. Jesus doesn't want us to love the law, but to love neighbor. The law is a tool for God's love and not its replacement. In today's gospel reading, the Pharisees, in their love for God's good law, lost sight of the well-being of people and our relationship with God that the law exists to serve. They separated the law, the rules, the policies, the theological doctrines from God and neighbor. 
we Christians today can also find ourselves holding to tradition, striving for church the way it used to be, but losing sight of God and neighbor. Another pastor friend of mine explained it like this, the laws are like a fence around the backyard, the Pharisees love their fence. But the fence is there so that you can more fully enjoy your backyard and play and relax with friends and family without worry. Laws are there so that you can enjoy relationships with God and people. Both the legal and the spiritual laws of marriage are there so that you can more fully enjoy the intimacy of marriage with peace of mind and mutual benefit. Laws that surround our society keep us safe and protective. Stop lights don't have to be offensive to your freedoms, but simply a good way to prevent accidents. The problem in today's gospel is that the Pharisees love their fence, spend all their time and energy on their fence and ignore the people and their God that showed up at their fence for a backyard barbecue. And despite all these good things that I've said about the law, I am still convinced by Jesus' example in today's reading and many other times that there are times when our God calls us to break the rules for the sake of love. Make a door in that fence, and if need be, dig a hole in it. Sometimes. There were religious laws about eating with defiled hands, unwashed hands, and these purity laws would have also prevented Jesus and his disciples from eating with certain people in certain places, like the hemorrhaging woman that Jesus healed, or the tanner that Peter stayed with in Joppa when he was spreading the gospel beyond Jerusalem or the many Gentiles that Paul's ministry brought into the church, or the lepers that Mother Teresa cared for in India, or the wedding that I officiated for my gay friends a couple weeks ago. All these people Jesus should not have welcomed to his table according to the tradition of the elders, but Jesus welcomes them anyway. There are times when we are called to break the rules for the sake of love. How do you know when to break rules? Rules are there for a reason. And often there are rule makers <coughs> that will explain that systems are set up for good for the people to know what's best. You can't decide everything on a case-by-case -case basis if you want. And I know that there are some rule lovers here that squirm right in the back where Lexi and Wayne are. There is a long list of exactly what buttons to press on that computer to make sure that nothing goes wrong that Lisa made for us, for her own well-being, for her own well-calm. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with the rules. Wash your hands. How do you know when to break the rules and which rules to break? I think... Jesus gives us a little help with that question today when he chastises the Pharisees. You abandon the commandment of God and hold to human tradition. Commandment. Singular. Not a giant book of rules. If you're a lawyer and you've seen a lawyer's office, it's like rules upon rules of books and books and books. You abandon the commandment of God. What is the commandment of God, that perfect law as our second lesson calls it? How do we discern God's law as apart from human tradition? Jesus gives us that answer in Scripture. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. And the second is like, love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets, Jesus says, hangs on these two commandments. Our second lesson says this, religion that is pure and undefiled before God is this, to care for the orphans and the widows in their distress. How do you know when to break the rules? When you are convicted by the love of God for the sake of neighbor. Not for your business, 
not for some loyalty that I scratch your back so you've got to scratch mine now. Not for politics, not even for good human ideals like freedom. Not for the success of the programs of this church so that there are more youth, more giving units. Only break rules when you are compelled to by the love for another person. When God's commandments get written on the heart with love, it is then that that moment has come to leave human traditions behind because the will of God has been revealed to you in the Another pastor told me, I don't want to cast off my personal responsibilities to love my neighbor onto the government. There are times when all the rules and systems and human institutions aren't getting the job done. And maybe they're even in the way. And it is your God-given conscience that convicts you to lend a helping hand, to volunteer your time, to give generously. So, will you break scriptural mandates to be friends with LGBTQ folks, inviting them to worship? Will you break U.S. regulations about immigration for the livelihood of an undocumented person? Will you break the promises that you've made to yourself to keep somebody out of your life that doesn't deserve you but needs you? Not easy questions. Not one that I can answer up here for you. It's between you and God and you. And there will be times when you're going to have to have that conversation with God. Jesus broke rules for the sake of people all the time. Loved the prostitute, welcomed her to the table. Loved the tax collector, made him one of his disciples. Next week we will read about a mixed race woman that he talked to and welcomed and taught. A foreign gay Roman soldier healed a member of his army in his room. And many, 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 many sick person, people that the Good Samaritan story tells a religious Christian should walk on by. But the one who was his neighbor stopped and helped. You will have to judge for yourself when that time comes, but I promise you there will be times when you are called by God to break rules for the sake of love. May you be blessed hearing the sermons at the blessed preaching. Amen.
to be found in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. We pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work. We pray to you, Lord God, for this community, the nation, and the world. We pray to you, Lord God, for the just and proper use of your creation. We pray to you, Lord God, for all those who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. We pray to you, Lord God, for the peace and unity of the Church of God. We pray to you, Lord God, for Elizabeth Eaton, our presiding bishop, named current our bishop, and for this congregation's ministers, staff, and lay leaders. We pray to you, Lord God, for President Biden, Governor Reynolds, and our nearby leaders in Winter Seven from School Administration, Hospital Board, and Change. To Mayor Phil McCumber, Police Chief Burke, Sheriff Barnes, and Supervisors Clifton, Fitch, and Stansel. What prayers do God's people have for you this morning? Pray for those who are contracting the Delta variant. Protect them so that their symptoms are mild. Be with our short staffed hospitals, clinics, and medical facilities as they love our sick neighbors. We pray for Afghanistan and particularly those who have been hurt. We pray for the families of the 95 dead, including our 13 U.S. military personnel. Pray for the 150 dollar injury. As evacuations come to an end, protect those who couldn't make it out and those that could, as they all rebuild their lives in new places. Let them find compassionate neighbors in these tough times. I pray for those places in the path of storms in our Gulf region in particular. We put them in your care. Please lessen storms, violent power. It's landfall. We pray for our local service organizations like the Kiwanis, Rotary, Ladies Giving Circle, and many others that the good people of our community help their. Bless their efforts, bless the helpers, bless the people they help, especially those kids in need. I place into your loving care Darlene, Dove, Travis, John, Sally, and Casey. With open hearts and minds, it is into your loving care that we commend all for whom we pray, whether aloud or in the silence of our hearts, trusting in the power of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the Holy Spirit who imbues creation with your human touch. In the name of Christ, we confess together. We have failed to walk with humility and gentleness. We have been careless with your creation, our neighbors, and ourselves. We have squandered the gifts of your love and grace. 
for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, forgive us our sins. In accordance with the promises of God and the command of Jesus Christ, all of your prayers have been heard and your sins forgiven. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with our offering, and I invite the offering to come up.
Thanks be to God. Thank you for coming to work.